Hello and welcome to the STM32L4 MOOC online training. My name is André Parata and this is the dedicated session for the ADC peripheral. ADC stands for Analog to Digital Converter and this is one of the most common peripherals in the MCU. This peripheral is meant to convert a voltage into a numerical value. In STM32 L4 Discovery Board, ADC can be configured in continuous conversion or one-shot mode. It can operate as fast as 5 megabits per second and it has 12-bit resolution. In this session we will learn how to set up and generate code for the ADC peripheral in STM32 CubeMX. The main objective is to make use of the DAC configured in the previous session, generate a known voltage and sample it with the ADC in its ADC input pin. The ADC conversion values will be transferred into memory by DMA controller, as we want to offload the CPU as much as possible. In this case, DMA controller will take care of the data transfer, making the CPU available to perform other tasks. We will do so by making use of the HAL ADC functions. We will learn how to use them appropriately to succeed in sampling with ADC. Let's now open STM32CubeMX to start configuring our peripherals. As a first step, we will click on the new project. In the new open window, we will type our part number STM32L476VG and we will double click on the desired part. Or as an alternative, we can select and press the start project button. We will start by setting ADC1 on channel 6 as single-ended, since we are not measuring differential signals. As a consequence, PA1 is highlighted in green. Then we will enable DAC1 output 2 and set it to connect to external pin only mode. As a consequence, PA5 will be highlighted in green. Fortunately, PA1 or ADC input or PA5 or DAC output are located next to each other and they just need to be connected via a jumper, which can be found on the bottom layer of the L4 discovery board. We can now proceed to the clock configuration window and to be in line with the recent configuration we will accept the STM32QMX automatic resolution. As we can see, in the resolution proposed the external oscillator was selected as clock source for the ADC while the MCU is kept at a lower frequency. This setup is typical in low power applications as we can still make use of the full capabilities of the peripherals while keeping the consumption to a minimum. In the configuration tab, we will start by opening the DAC configuration. We can leave the default settings here and let's have a look on the ADC configuration now. On ADC settings, we have a synchronous clock source 12-bit data resolution. Here we just need to change the DMA continuous request settings to enabled. And then we need to configure sample and hold period. So let's open the rank options group. Here we have channel number 6 which is the right one and then on sampling time we have 2.5 cycles. As you remember, the ADC clock source is 32 MHz. 2.5 cycles seems to be a very small number, so I would suggest to increase it to 92.5 cycles. We can apply settings and go to the DMA settings. On DMA settings, we will add DMA channel by clicking Add and we select ADC1. As we are using continuous data transfers, we will change the mode to circular buffer. The memory address will be incremented after each transfer and on data size we can leave half word as ADC has 12-bit resolution. So as everything is properly set, we can just save our project and generate the code using System Workbench for STM32 as our IDE. 
After the code is generated by STM32CubeMX and our project is fully loaded on system workbench for STM32, we will open our main.c file stored inside of the source folder. In the main.c file you can see the initialization of all the peripherals defined on STM32CubeMX. In this specific case you can see the system clock configuration, DMA, ADC and DAC. As a first step, we will initialize two variables in user code private variable section, one for DAC output value and another for ADC input value. Let's initialize value DAC to zero. Let's now go to the user code section two and start our peripherals. It is important to calibrate the ADC before starting the conversion. So we will start using the HAL ADC calibration. In this case, we will use HAL ADC EX calibration start. The suffix EX tells us that this function is specific for this family, so its implementation is included in the extension files. This function expects two input parameters, the peripheral handler and the operation mode. As we are operating in the single-ended mode, we need to set the correct mode. We can see the available options if we enter the function declaration. So we copy it and we are ready to start the ADC conversion with DMA transferring the ADC output value to the memory. HAL ADC start DMA. Parameters are ADC handler, the second is a pointer to the buffer in memory and the last parameter is the length of the buffer. The buffer needs to be typecast to a 32-bit and signed integer. The length is going to be 1 as we just want to transfer one ADC output value. The configuration of ADC is now complete. Let's now start the DAC. We will use the function HAL DAC start. The parameters are DAC handler and the channel number. This information can be seen if we go into the function declaration. As you might recall from the STM32QMX configuration, the selected channel was the channel number 2. We will copy this and paste it in the second parameter field. Let's now go to the infinite loop in the main function. As we want to make this example as dynamic as possible, we will generate a sawtooth signal on the DAC output and measure it with the configured ADC. We will start by setting the DAC output value, so we will use the function HAL DAC set value and the parameters will be the DAC handler, the DAC channel number, the alignment which we will use and in this case is the most common, the 12-bit long alignment and finally the output value for the DAC. Then, inside of an if condition, we will check if the DAC value is lower than 4095, which is our maximum value for a 12-bit resolution DAC. If the value is lower, we will increment it. And if not, on an else statement, we will reset it to zero. We will add some delay, it could be 20 milliseconds in order to have a stable output DAC value. The code that we just typed will sweep through all the DAC output possible values in roughly 80 seconds and then it resets to zero, restarting the process all over again. As the ADC was configured with software trigger, we need to start it in our code. 
So the function will be HAL ADC start and the only parameter is the ADC handler. Thanks to the ADC's DMA mode, after the end of each conversion, it will automatically invoke a DMA transfer to memory. This will be all from the source code, so we can build the project We will upload the project to our discovery board as we are not going to enter the debug mode in this example. In this hands-on, we will use the STMS Studio to monitor the ADC value. This tool allows us to observe all the global variables in runtime. To monitor the ADC value, we will go to File import variables from an executable file. We will open the file which is inside the debug folder and it has the extension .elf. Here we have a list of global variables and now let's search for the value ADC and import it. Now the variable will be seen in the display variable settings box. We will drag and drop it to the display box and then we need to redefine the axis limits. We will define it bigger than the upper value, so 4100 would be enough. As you can see, the value is increasing until the maximum value is reached and then it will go back to zero and the whole process will restart. We can change the graphical display of the information and to do so we just need to select other formats from this box. We will use a bar graph as an example. This will be all from this session. Thank you for watching.